In today's video, I wanted to talk about Vim, actually, and how I use Vim for .NET development, specifically in Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac, and Visual Studio Code. Um, you might ask, why would you do that? That seems weird. And that's what someone who's never tried Vim sounds like. Vim is actually, specifically we're talking about Vim commands. Vim, the text editor, no, 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 that, get that out of my face. But the Vim commands, how you, you know, kind of interact on the keyboard with input into the editor is actually very nice and you can move extremely quickly and you can be very efficient and be very productive there's there's really two main reasons why you would use vim for development the first being again speed productivity and and kind of a subset of that is how much fun being fast is. It's extremely fun. I, you know, I always think back to the first time I ever used the end key on the keyboard to go to the end of a sentence. That's not, you know, it takes you some time to get to that point, at least if you're old, as old as I am. And the first time I did that, I felt really cool. Like, you know, shift, end, delete. Hey, I deleted a line, that's insane. Um, well, Vim is that times about a hundred. <laughs> So pretty fun. So there's productivity side, but then there's also the kind of ergonomic side where the less you move your arms back and forth to the mouse or, you know, off of the home row, basically, the better. You'll experience that a little bit as we go through this. But I wanted to make a quick video on describing how to get started with it, how, you know, the basic commands, how you can integrate it into your .NET development, because, you know, as a .NET developer, you may not be thinking about them because why would you? But let me tell you, it's actually pretty great. So let's dig in. So the first question really is, well, how do you use Vim inside of Visual Studio uh, or Visual Studio Code, or VS for Mac? The answer changes depending on those. The easiest one is definitely Visual Studio Code. All you do is you go to the extensions and you search for Vim. And that should bring back a few options. Uh, the one I use is this one right here. It's just called Vim. It's by VS Code Vim, I believe. And it's what it says it is. It's a Vim emulator for Visual Studio Code. And what that means is basically it gives you the options to use Vim commands, which we'll talk about that in a moment. So that's what I use for Visual Studio Code. Looking at proper Visual Studio, there is an extension. If you go to extensions, manage extensions, and then online and you search for VS Vim and you will get this VS Vim 2022. That's the one I use for Visual Studio and provides the, almost the exact same functionality as the one for VS Code. Let's talk about VS for Mac real quick. It's pretty different. And in fact, I actually just got, I don't have it over here. I just got a new MacBook because I wanted to try that experience uh, as a Windows person. It's been interesting. I'll probably talk about it at some point. As part of that, I was installing Visual Studio for Mac and had to go through the trouble of getting VS Vim installed, which was actually much harder than I thought it was gonna be. I actually ended up having to go to the GitHub for VS Vim and download a package that the creator put in an issues thread and that finally got me there. But downloading from the main releases and things like that would not work. So just to let you know, if you're on a Mac and you're trying to do this, it may be a little trickier. Uh, I might put some information in my comment down below to kind of help with that. But anyways, just to know that. Okay, so now that you've got those installed, let's dig into what is Vim. Let's talk about Vim in general for these extensions specifically. I'm not really talking about the editor itself, so just if you wanna use that editor, go for it, but it's not really what I'm talking about here. Vim for Visual Studio. The main thing you need to know is there's a few modes. Specifically, the two most important ones are what's called normal mode, and insert mode. Normal mode provides all kinds of movement abilities with your keys. So for instance, if I'm in normal mode, uh, which you can guarantee that you're in normal mode by pressing escape. If I'm in normal mode, pressing J doesn't type a J, pressing J moves down one line. So I can just hit J, 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 and I can move down and hit K to go back up. So important part of them is knowing that J, K move up and down, H, which is right beside J moves left and L moves to the right. So you're kind of, you're moving around with that row if you wanna quickly move around. I would highly suggest if you've installed the extension, you just, you just get in there and you just press J and K a bunch because it will kind of get you used to that movement and kind of show you how kind of nice it is to move with those keys instead of moving over to the arrow keys, for instance, because that's a that's an arm movement. That's what we're trying to avoid. So K and J to move back and forth. Just know that that's going to feel weird at first and but you'll get used to it. That's why I suggest just getting in there and doing it. 
So your most common commands you're going to use are obviously JK, HNL, though I don't really use HNL that much because there's faster ways to move around, which we'll talk about. There's also U for undo, which a few minutes ago, I deleted this line here because it's not actually valid. I don't know why I was in the source. So I'm going to delete that line with DD. We'll talk about it in a second. But if I press U, it undoes it. So U will undo. It's, it's just like doing control Z in Windows, for instance. So you undo. So if you ever mess something up, just press undo. So if you want to move more than just one character space at a time, even up and down, there's some keys you can do. So W will move you to the next word. How does it define word? That's usually a symbol or a space. So for instance, if I press W here, it'll go to clickable pen. If I press it again, it'll go to the end of that, to the next symbol, which was a curly brace. And then if I press B, it'll actually go kind of backwards that way. So it's the beginning of the previous word. W to go forward, B to go backwards by a word. So you can see that that moves much quicker. If I just hold W, you know, I go pretty fast. If I hold B, I go fast the other way. So that one's good. There's also E, which will take you to the end of the word. So that's pretty useful. You can just kind of spam E. So uh, the main way I use these is in conjunction with another mode, and it's called visual mode. So if I press V, lowercase v, and I will say all these commands are case sensitive because the uppercase or lowercase versions of them do different things. So if I press lowercase v, you can see down there right here, I'll hopefully zoom in on the video a little bit, it says I'm in visual mode. And so what that means, you'll notice if I move now, I am highlighting things. And it's kind of a way to do a large selection. Doing lowercase v will do individual characters at a time, but if I move up and down, obviously I can do full lines. But also there's shift v, which will do the entire line. So you can shift V, highlight, you know, these two graphics views, and then you can do something to them. So, you know, like earlier before I press D, D to delete. But right now, since I have these highlighted, if I press D, they're gone. And then I can press U to bring them back. So hopefully you're starting to see some of the power here. Um, so for instance, let's say I wanted to delete these. And I'll say if you press D to delete something, it's not permanently gone. It's actually on your, it's kind of a type of clipboard, your yank clipboard or something like that. I think it's called. So right now, if I press P, it'll actually paste what I had out there. So again, I can highlight these, press D, move down, and it'll. if you press P, it will paste to the line below where your cursor was. If you do Shift P, it will place to the line above where your cursor was. Okay, so that's paste, P for paste. That one's pretty easy. D's for deletes. And again, D once puts you in a delete mode, and then D again will delete the full line. OK, so DD to delete a full line. That's one of the most used things I do. You can press zero to go to the beginning of a line and dollar sign to go to the end of a line if you're trying to do movement. Though I will say I, I use that one sometimes, like if I'm trying to delete to the end of the line or something, I'll do that. But a lot of times I just do shift A just to move me to the end of the line and also put me in insert mode a little quicker. OK, so those are some movement commands, but let's talk about insert mode. So insert mode is the other kind of mode you'll use the most. So if I press I, it puts me in insert mode. You can see my cursor is now the kind of vertical bar instead of the full character size. And what that means is I can actually type. So this is me typing. <laughs> Visual Studio is going to help me out because it clearly knows I meant is enabled. All right, so now I'm in insert mode. To get out of insert mode and back into normal mode, you'll press escape. And then I can press, for instance, V, B, 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 delete to delete what I inserted. So that's the other kind of mode you'll use the most is insert mode. Now, do note when you're in insert mode, you can't type J and K to go back and forth. You actually type it. That's the point of the mode is to type. The other kind of mode, I would say it's not really a mode, kind of a mode is if you press R, you can replace a character. So I can type T here and I would replace the G with a T. And then the kind of mode of that is if I do capital R, I can type the full thing and replace the whole. So like if I type <clears throat> Trabix, you know, uh, you're, you're replacing as you're typing. I do use that one every now and then. Uh, it's actually pretty nice if the word actually fits in what you're trying to do, which I'll admit is kind of rare. But so R to replace, Shift R, you know, capital R to do a replace mode that will continue until you press exit. Okay. And back to insert mode type stuff. Another one I use a lot is if I press Shift A, you know, capital A, it'll put me at insert mode at the end of the current line. That one is obviously very useful if you're trying to say, you know, put a semicolon at the end of a line. You can press that and then semicolon. Okay. And one more other kind of useful 
insert mode type trick. And one that you definitely need to know is the letter O. So it inserts a line and puts you in insert mode below your cursor. And I believe capital O is above your cursor. So pretty nifty there. I use that all the time. So uh, another, I mean, kind of back related to the replace command is there's S and C, both of which do sort of similar things. So if I do the letter S, it will replace what I was, you know, what I had selected and put me in insert mode. So it basically deleted the character I had and put me in insert mode, uh, which is cool. If I do, so for instance, I guess I could do like V E S and it deleted the line and put me in insert mode. Sort of related to that is the C, which is basically just, it's gonna delete whatever I give it. If I type C and then E, it deletes to the end of that word, stuff like that. So that's, that one's pretty useful too, just delete. The, the point, the thing is though, you have to trust it to know where the word is if you're trying to do that. But you know, like for here, this one's pretty easy. There's a space, so it'll know where to go. All right, so uh, let's see, what else? Oh, you can use tilde to convert the case of a character. So if I press tilde, it made it lowercase. You can see the G became lowercase. If I press it again, it makes it uppercase. So if I get a whole word, I can just do that and it flips the case. Pretty nifty. There's another uh, type of command, the, the period. And I'll just say there's a million of these. <laughs> uh, I would highly recommend as you're learning to use Vim to have a Vim cheat sheet open. I'll put one in the description below that I use because you will forget these. You 100% will. But the important thing is to know they're there and then incorporate them into your workflow so that you can be more productive using Vim. This other one I want to talk about is the period key, which redoes what you just did. So for instance, if I did tilde, 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 I press period, 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 period. It redid the last command, the last tilde command. It's kind of the opposite of undo, basically. So if I did DD, for instance, and I press period, it did a bunch of DDs and then you to undo them again. OK, so probably the only advanced thing we'll talk about here. This is kind of a getting started video, but I want to show you these because I think they're very cool. I haven't really incorporated them into my uh, work much because they're kind of complex and you have to think about them a bit. But what I'm talking about is macros. So macros are pretty cool. Basically, you press lowercase Q and now I'm in like a macro mode. So any keystroke I put in will kind of be recorded. So once you press Q, the first thing you do after that is you give it a letter to bind the macro to. So what I do oftentimes is a capital W. So now I have bound the macro that I'm about to record to capital W. And then you just do a sequence. So I'll do, um, let's say, W, 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 tilde, 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 down to left to shift V, uh, tilde. And then you press Q to finish the recording. So let's see it work. So the way you use it is you do at sign and then your saved letter. So I just did it. It did exactly what I told it to. So if I go back up here and I do at sign W again, it did the exact same thing I, to I told it to do down below. It pressed the exact same sequence. So that's actually useful if you're, for instance, coming in here and let's see if I have one. OK, so let's say, for instance, I wanted to record myself putting a semicolon at the end of this line and then coming to the front of the line and tabbing it twice whatever. So I'm going to press Q. I'm going to save this to one and then I'm going to press A semicolon escape zero insert tab tab escape Q. OK, so now if I come down here and I do at one, it does it for me at one at one at one at one. There you go. That's that's a macro. They're pretty useful. You know, you kind of have to be thinking about it. Also, this is F sharp code, so there shouldn't be semicolons in here. So I just did a very dirty thing. All you F sharp people, I'm very sorry. I did not mean to put semicolons in this code. But anyways, yeah, so Vim, very cool. Uh, you can be very fast with it. I'm I'm honestly not that fast with it. I've seen people that are much faster, but you know, it's pretty fun and pretty useful. Uh, another one I'll just throw in real quick. I do highlight a section and I press shift and then uh, brackets. So for instance, I do it that way, it indents, boom, move a whole block of indents. 
pretty cool. Yeah, so that's Vim. I just wanted to make a quick video on it because I wanted to kind of, I guess for one thing, show that I think it's worth doing and I think it can make you a lot more productive. And you know, I think it's really fun. I think Vim commands are really fun. All the haters out there, keep hating, that's fine. We don't need it. I'm just gonna sit over here and try to think of macros for 10 seconds every time I try to do an action. Definitely won't slow me down. So uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you next time. Bye.